Welcome to the Oral Health Care Skills Web Series number three, Oral Health Assessment. I am your facilitator, Mary Lou Vanderhorst, from the Regional Geriatric Program Central in Hamilton, Ontario. I would like to welcome the presenter, Donna Bose, from the Halton Region Health Department in Oakville, Ontario. Hello. And knowledge broker, Terry Kirkpatrick, from the Senior Health Research Transfer Network in Ottawa, Ontario. Hello. We ask that you note several items. First, no photos in this presentation may be copied, but permissions may be requested. Secondly, this is an educational presentation to be used for learning purposes, and users of this information are responsible for adaptation of this information to their practice and work environment. We have made every effort to provide you with accurate, evidence-based and useful information. Finally, we thank Sheraton, Halton Region, and RGPC for their contributions to make possible the Oral Health Care Skills Web Series. Donna Bose will now present Series 3 Oral Health Assessment Tool. Okay, the Oral Health Assessment Tool, OHAT. The Oral Health Assessment Tool was developed by Chalmers in 2004, modified with permission in 2007 for use in Halton Region. Ideally, all residents in long-term care should have a complete oral health examination by a qualified dental professional upon admission and then on a regular basis thereafter. Best practice indicates that these examinations should be supplemented, though, with oral health assessments and screenings by trained caregivers. The only published, comprehensive oral health assessment tool developed specifically for use by caregivers for residents in residential care was the Kaiser Jones Brief Oral Health Assessment Examination, which was first published in 1995. Further training of this tool was undertaken by Dr. Jane Chalmers in 2003, which resulted in some modifications to the tool, which Chalmers then renamed the Oral Health Assessment Tool, or OHAT. In 2007, with permission from Dr. Chalmers, the OHAT was modified slightly to meet the needs of long-term care in the regional municipality of Holmes. This tool was featured in the RNAO Nursing Best Practice Guideline Oral Health Nursing Assessment and Intervention 2008. The Oral Health Assessment Tool for Long-Term Care. In Ontario, the long-term care home assessments are to be conducted upon admission and then quarterly, so we added this section to the top of the OHAT tool. The categories that are covered include lips, tongue, gums and tissues, saliva, natural teeth, dentures, oral cleanliness, and dental pain. The assessment categories are followed by scoring. So there's a scoring of zero, which is a healthy state. One indicates that there's some change, and two indicates that it's unhealthy. Within this scoring sheet, we've added sections that are colored a pink color. The pink or underlined sections always tell you that there is an action that's going to be required. We've added an action required or action completed column in order to support accountability. There was also a follow-up section incorporated in order to complete the case management component. In the following slides, we will go through each of the categories, the changes and the actions that will be required. The resident assessment instrument or minimum and minimum data set is the one that is normally used in long-term care and the one that most people are familiar with. In comparing the OHAT to the RIE MDS, we suggest that you do the OHAT and then add the outcome information into the MDS RIE. Specifically in the OHAT tool, lips, tongue, and saliva are covered. Gums and tissues are covered in the RIE MDS in, in the sections L1E, natural teeth is covered, dentures, oral cleanliness, and to some extent, 
substantial pain, mouth pain and mouth debris. So there are skipped areas in the Rye MDS that you can pick up through the OHAT. So the, the information contained in the OHAT could be merged and put into the Rye MDS. And now we'll go through category by category. Lips. Healthy lips should be continuous in color, firm in texture, free of lesions, semi-moist, apparent border between the lips and the skin of the face. Commissures or corners of the mouth should be continuous and intact. Changes include lip dryness, cracks and irritation, angular chelitis, which is an inflammation and fissuring at the corners of the mouth, herpes simplex lesions, uh, also called cold sores, findings that can be treated using in-house protocols. A category two, or unhealthy, is an abnormal finding. They're very serious in nature and require immediate referral for further investigation. They would include signs of skin changes, such as those shown in the slide. The action required, or oral care intervention, would be the use of lanolin, KY jelly, or other lip lubricants. We warn you not to use petroleum-based products. Consider the possibility also of a vitamin B deficiency for angular callosis or areas where there, there is uh, cracking in the corners of the mouth. You want to monitor for seven days and then refer if there is no change. The next category would be the tongue. A healthy tongue shows bilateral symmetry reddish pink all over and moist, it may be pigmented in relation to the normal coloration of skin. Changes would include redness due to xerostomia or varicosities, that's the little blue spot that you see on the bottom part of the tongue in the middle photo. Other changes would include things like fissured tongue, that is clefts or narrow slits that are visible on the surface or geographic tongue. These are areas that are void or denuded of papilla, and they appear over time to migrate due to ongoing degeneration and regeneration of the papilla. Could be light or uneven coating of the tongue. In fact, the photo shows half the tongue coated, which is likely due to stroke. Some of these changes are hereditary, some to aging or medical conditions. Although they are not normal, they do not need to be monitored. Unhealthy or abnormal findings would include extreme coating of the tongue, tenderness, extreme color changes, enlargement, or any difficulty swallowing. The action required or oral care intervention would be cleaning the tongue twice a day with soft toothbrush or tongue scraper and for changes. Cleaning the tongue is just as important as cleaning the teeth, but more likely to stimulate the gag reflex. Just as a tip, you can place the toothbrush across the tongue and ask the resident to press their tongue against the brush and then move it in and out of the mouth. This sometimes tricks the gag reflex as it puts the tongue in control of the movement. Gums and tissue. Healthy gums and tissue should be a continuous pinkish red color or pigmented in relation to the normal coloration of the client's skin. Should be firm in texture, free of lesions, and moist. The most notable changes in gums and tissues will require referral, but mild changes may respond to in-house treatment and monitoring. So this area is a judgment call. Level one changes might include things like abrasions, traumatic lesions, maybe a light buildup of soft debris, mild redness in gum tissue, things that could be treated and monitored. Obvious decay in up to six teeth or any broken teeth, of course, would require referral, as would a sore under a denture. Level two or unhealthy or abnormal findings include things like obvious decay in seven or more teeth, abundant amounts of debris, excessive bleeding, halitosis. Action required or oral care intervention for gingival. No obvious 
in-house treatment can be initiated as appropriate. Referral is generally not necessary unless there is concern expressed by the resident or the nurse feels that the situation poses a risk. The level two or unhealthy category covers situations where there is more than one broken area or tooth, where the denture is perhaps split in two pieces, or perhaps it is not worn due to poor fit, it's causing discomfort, or perhaps the denture can only be worn if the denture, if denture adhesive is used. The denture may be covered with heavy tartar, stain, or debris that cannot be removed by staff. There are a couple of oral care interventions that can be implemented in-house. First of all, denture identification is critical for helping staff keep track of dentures. Identification kits are readily available and easy for staff to use. Generally, these kits include a sanding sponge, a marking pencil, and acrylic sealer, along with easy-to-follow instruction guide. For full or complete dentures that have a minor amount of hard tartar, you can implement a weekly overnight vinegar soak of half white vinegar and half water. Dentures need to be with a denture brush and water or denture cleaning paste twice daily to remove soft debris. Soaking will not remove the soft, sticky plaque that clings to it. Assessing oral cleanliness is relatively straightforward. Healthy mouths are clean with no food particles or hard deposits visible. Level 1 changes would be indicated if there's a small amount of visible, visible debris and or tartar in one or two areas of mouth, but the assessor feels that implementing better oral hygiene care will most likely reverse this situation. Level 2 would be recorded where there are there are food particles, heavy tartar and debris in most areas of the mouth, severe halitosis, or the assessor feels that cleaning by a dental professional is necessary. Your oral care intervention. Implementing proper cleaning twice a day should result in visible improvement within seven to 10 days. The tip off is usually bleeding. With proper oral care, there should be no visible bleeding on brushing. If proper care is implemented and bleeding continues beyond seven days, referral is then advised. Dental pain often goes unrecognized, particularly if a resident is unable to communicate verbally. Careful monitoring is essential. If no behavioral, verbal, or physical signs of pain are exhibited, then the resident can be deemed healthy. For level one or two categories, referral is always advised. Level one category reported where a resident is agitated, resists oral care, exhibits verbal and or behavioral signs of pain, such as pulling at the face, chewing lips, refusing to eat, and or aggressive behavior. Level two category would be reported where there are physical signs such as swelling or gum, broken teeth, ulcers or gum boils, they're sometimes called an abscess, or as well, there may be verbal and or behavioral signs. Although level one or level two scoring will result in requirement for a referral because antibiotic, antifungal, or any other medication may be required, you must still continue with daily oral hygiene care. The action required column is a section that serves as a reminder to ensure that either the nursing intervention took place or the referral was made. If no is checked off, then an explanation and further documentation must be done. An oral hygiene care plan must be completed for each resident. The follow-up assessment would need to be done quarterly or sooner if a condition is being monitored. This is a sample of an oral hygiene care plan, which can help provide individualized information about each resident or client. 
It can be posted in the resident's bathroom as well as included in the chart. The top left area can be completed using information that has been collected from the OHAD. The lower portion outlining the barriers should be completed with input from the caregivers who work regularly with the client or resident. The top right section would, be, would require input from a dental professional or a caregiver with specialized dental training. Follow-up completes the case management process. If the resident or the family refuses referral and or dental treatment, this must be recorded somewhere. I would like to thank Donna Bowes for the Series 3 Oral Health Assessment Tool presentation. I am your facilitator, Mary Lou Vanderhorst, and along with Donna Bowes, and Terry Kirkpatrick, our knowledge broker, we invite you to watch one of the other six oral health care skills web series. Series 1, Denture Care. Series 2, Tools of the Trade. Series 4, Basic Oral Care. Series 5, The Two Toothbrush Technique. Series 6, Infection Control. And Series 7, Oral Hygiene Care Plan. For more information and resources, we recommend that you go to any of the websites listed on pages two or three of this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>